I'm Carol James. I am a professor in the area of body image, eating disorders, and mental health. I'm currently an associate dean at the in the Faculty of Social Sciences for undergraduate studies and student experience. I'm currently the only known eating disorder specialist in the English speaking Caribbean. So, so this is for the psychology component. We do have a medical doctor who is also trained in uh, eating disorders. So I just wanted to clarify that. My area of research focuses on body image and eating disorders, although I have a wide range. So with body image, individuals try to move towards a body ideal and they will engage in unhealthy behaviors to get to that ideal. The unhealthy behaviors can result in them manipulating their food intake and that can get to a position where there is a lot of obsession and thoughts surrounding food, surrounding body image and uh, this can lead to more illness in terms of anxiety, in terms of depression, uh, the food obsession, but it also has a physical outcome. So it is one of the psychiatric disorders where we also have medical complications. So in as much as uh, people may believe that eating disorders do not exist in Jamaica, uh, they do, they're real, and uh, they, they can result in the individual being hospitalized because of the manipulation of, of food. When I decided to go overseas to study, the, to specialize in eating disorders, we, we, we didn't have a lot of psychologists. We still don't have a lot of psychologists at the time, and so we needed the support at the hospital to help patients, to provide therapy. But uh, because we, we didn't have that skill set of eating disorder, uh, eating disorder specialization, I made the decision to leave. And that wasn't fully supported because others couldn't see the vision. So for the professors or the psychiatrists who needed the support at the hospital, it was difficult for them to see uh, someone who could help leave our setting. So, so I wouldn't say that it was welcome initially. It was like them trying to make sense of why would you leave Jamaica, knowing fully well that we need psychologists here and we don't currently have uh, patients on the ward with suffering from eating disorder so it, it really didn't make sense to them at the time me leaving so so that would have been one hurdle another hurdle was when so I, I was doing the internship overseas but at the same time working on my dissertation and I sent my dissertation back but it was rejected because it was a, a they didn't believe that I had completed the dissertation, even though my supervisor had signed it off. And it was, I had to come back, fly back to Jamaica in order to physically hand it in. And even when I did, at the time, there were challenges with the, the person who was receiving the dissertation to actually believe that, that I, uh, I was handing in a dissertation. But she, she had believed that I wasn't of some mind. That was her, those were her words at the time, thinking that I was uh, delusional for handing in the dissertation. So until my supervisor went to her and said to her that this is a jip, that she has completed her dissertation, you need to sign off on it and accept it. That, is, that was when she actually believed it. Now, looking back, I mean, at the time I was thinking, ah, you know, it was hurtful to know that I put in so much work and that she was questioning my sanity. 
but looking back I realized that she would have encountered other graduate students who may have had their own struggles, uh, mental health struggles, and it's through that perception that she was using to try to make sense of the timeline that I'd used to complete my dissertation because I was doing both simultaneously, the dissertation and the pre-doc internship. So while doing our practicum, uh, we, we would see patients and there was a case that was admitted to the psychiatric ward and she was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. And I, I specifically remember the day where you know people were talking about this diagnosis and this patient was admitted and like there was a lot of attention and focus there. I felt within myself that I wanted to help this patient and so I felt inspired to, to go back to the psychiatric ward and to see if I could meet with the patient. But the following day when I went there, because of the attention that she was getting and because we didn't have the resources at the time to assist her, uh, the patient's parents decided to take her overseas for treatment. And so with that missed opportunity, I uh, said to myself that you know I, I need to be in a position to be able to address this uh, need. So we've covered all of the other areas in uh, clinical psychology, but this is the one area that required the specialization in order to treat. So that is why I decided to start looking for internship sites overseas and to, to also get exposure because I, I did the undergrad, the masters and the PhD at UWE. So I also wanted the exposure. I'm the associate dean for undergraduate studies and student experience. So what that means is that, uh, and in the faculty of social sciences, which is the largest faculty, uh, yeah, at UWE Mona. And we see, so my job is to oversee the student experiences as well as to support them in any challenges they may have. So it may mean developing policies, it may mean providing information, providing support, their learning experiences, and life experiences. So during COVID was when I was appointed this position and we found that our students were struggling to cope and because of that it inspired me to create knowledge or information that will help our students. So uh, out of this, out of COVID, we developed the Roll With It platform which is which encourages students to be resilient to apply mental flexibility because that will improve your mental health and on this platform we have like seminars uh, that cater to like time management help individuals to understand what's happening mentally help them to understand about the different types of mental disorders as well as to provide them with coping strategies so we initially developed this for our Faculty of Social Sciences students, but the pandemic impacted everyone. So our dean at the time asked for this to be extended to members of staff. And while we were developing this program to support mental health in the Faculty of Social Sciences, the other faculties benefited. So the principal at the time asked for us to share this information with the different faculties and I'm also aware that some of the information goes to uh, the other campuses. We, we also share this information outside of the UA community. So our newsletters, we have newsletters, seminars with uh, video links that we uh, will send to different individuals who are interested in the topics that we're looking at. And oh, actually, I should mention that we do have a conference that's coming up in December, 6 to 8. And this is, it's called Dying to be Beautiful, 
eating disorders, body image, and health in the Caribbean. And what that conference does is that it brings awareness not only to body image and eating disorders, but to mental health in general. And we do have a lot of speakers and experts in the area who will be presenting at the conference. So it's both scientific as well as practical. So uh, it's open to everyone to attend if they'd like to improve their mental health. And certainly with you know the struggles post-pandemic that individuals have been experiencing, we would like to serve not just UE community, but uh, the, the community outside of UWE and also the international community because we do have international practitioners who are coming here to present but also to learn about our culture because uh, we've discovered that culture and lack of understanding can affect the type of treatment that we give to our patients. So.